Hey y'all, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today we are doing something a little different. Today we are doing a dedicated wood round video. For those of you that don't know, a wood round is actually how my channel ended up taking off. So I am bringing it back to the basics today and we are gonna do a full video on a wood round DIY. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, y'all, we getting right into this. So this is an 18 inch in diameter wood round. It is one inch thick. I get them from Home Depot when they are available. I will leave the link down in my description box. So I'm using my Skill Orbital Sander. I am going with the grain of the wood. When you see me tilt my sander up, that is me trying to get out any like nicks or grooves or dings that are in the wood. Now make sure you get these sides of these wood rounds. They are so, so rough that if you try staining them and you do not sand them, they are gonna be a blotchy mess and it does not look great. So take the time and sand your sides. Then we are going to, you're gonna do the back too. Then I'm switching my sanding pad. So I used an 80 grit. Now I'm using a 220 grit. This will make it feel so smooth like butter okay that is what we want it to feel like so now we're going to go ahead and take this in after wiping it off i'm getting jacobian by minwax this is an oil based stain grabbing some gloves my microfiber cloth the microfiber cloths you can get in a huge bag at walmart for ten dollars i cut them into two by two strips and shake all the little lint balls off of there now we are going to stain. So I go with the grain of the wood here and we're going to follow this all the way down. Now, people have asked me why the microfiber cloths. I have tried the sponge, I have tried towels, I have tried everything and I love the sponge because you are basically rubbing that stain into the wood. Um, it also goes a long way and since this is oil-based, you can quickly just toss the cloth. All right, so now we have to get the sides and since we sanded them, it goes on nice and smooth. So I just take it to the edge of my table and you are just gonna follow this all around. No tricks to this one. All right, now we're going to the back. I like to stain the back of my sides. If I am gonna charge somebody 40 to $60 for a wood round, I want them to get something that is fully finished. Some people don't finish it, that is preference, but I know that if I were to receive a wood round that I paid $50 for and the back wasn't stained, I would feel like I got chipped a little. So I prefer to do the back as well. So I'm gonna show you right here. After you've stained it, this is where you decide what's gonna be the front, what's gonna be the back. And I say this because blemishes will show up once you stain. So as you can see, this side is absolutely perfect. Then I turn it around and you see like these blotches and these are just in the natural wood. It's going to happen. And then what I didn't catch were like these, it almost looks like scratch marks on the top, probably where they were banged and I didn't sand it out. All so right, that well, is going to be our back. I wanted to hop in real quick and just say hi, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sammy. I do DIYs, I do wood signs and there's tons of laughter on my channel. Uh, I am excited that you decided to join me today. I hope you are learning something from this video. If you have questions, make sure to comment down below. Also search my channel because I have done a ton of other DIY wood rounds. I have also answered in videos tons of questions regarding wood, how I would do my signs, what products I use, and all of that stuff. So make sure you go scrolling through my channel and make sure you head over to Instagram and follow me there as well. All of those links will be down in the description box for you. So if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging this video, give it a like, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future DIY wood rounds. And let's go ahead and get back into it. All right, y'all. So now we are trying to find a line on our wood round. These are pine wood that are glued together. So there are lines there for you. Utilize them. Now I'm taking 233 plus automotive tape. This is by Scotch. Now it is a lot more expensive than regular painter's tape, but I will tell you, I have never had a bleed with this tape. I have all of my supplies linked down in my Amazon store link down in the description box so you can check that out. 
Now taking a Linen White by Rust-Oleum, this is a chalk paint, that is called a paint dozer that I'm using. I am taking my sponge roller and I am using a very light hand. You should never have to apply pressure to this sponge roller at all. So as you see right here, I'm rolling it on with a light hand. You could always get more paint, that's the whole thing. Now, the sponge roller will leave little like lines on it, and then as you see right here, I go back over what I was doing and smooth that out so you can't see lines. Then taking our sponge roller, we're gonna do the sides. I do get in frame, I promise. And just, you're not gonna press hard here either. Use a light hand. You don't wanna get a bunch of paint on the back of your signs. I mean, a little's okay, a lot of it, uh, not so okay. So. After we do that, I'm gonna get the blow dryer on cool setting. If you use hot heat on here, hot heat, duh, um, it will crack your chalk paint. So I do this just to speed up the process so I can move on to our second coat. So the second coat, same thing. You're gonna do the front and you are gonna do the top. The white part is what's gonna be the top of our sign. I know it's different from your view, but you're gonna finish that, let it dry, and then the best part of making these wood rounds taking off the tape and seeing this crisp line. Yes. Give me an applause down in the comments. You guys, last week I received a message from a woman named Cindy Mowry and in it she put, I would love to introduce you to Lane. He is severe special needs and does not speak or hear. He absolutely loves watching your YouTube videos. I am his caretaker Monday through Friday. He knows how to get to your channel and watches it all day. I just wanted you to know that you not only bring joy to us regular people, but you also, but also the special needs. He loves being creative, so we will be making a few projects inspired by you. Thank you for being you, Cindy Mowry and Lane. And y'all, if you Oh, it touches me so much because it is crazy the amount of people that you can touch on this platform. And, you know, at the end of the day, if you can touch one person, it makes all of this hard work, all of these long hours, I mean, all of it so worth it. So thank you so much, Cindy, for sending me this very inspiring message. And I hope it inspires others as well that although you may not know it, you can be touching so many other people's lives in so many ways that you just do not know. So Lane, although you cannot hear me, happy crafting my new friends. I appreciate you so much. So taking another piece of that same automotive tape, I'm starting from the bottom of our white line. I'm gonna tape that off on the edges. Now, it's a round surface, so it might be a little hard to tape it off on the sides, but you can do it. Then taking a smaller piece, I'm gonna use this as a guide, one, so we have even spacing throughout our lines, and two, it helps you keep a straight line as you're going up with your tape. So I'm gonna tape this off on the side as well, and then we're gonna use the same thing. We're gonna use that little spacer, and then we're gonna, oh, sorry, you guys, my kids are upstairs jumping around, all right. Doing the second one. Now this one gets a little harder because it's a little bit more curved, but I promise it works. You just gotta play around with it. And you're gonna bend that back, do the same thing for your next side. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I had to break up a kid fight. Okay, so now we are taking our stencil. I made this with my Cricut using Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. And then my transfer tape is just contact paper from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to remove this. Now, when you lay it on, do not press down on it until you are 100%, that is where you want it. So I'm gonna grab my ruler, I'm gonna measure on each side to make sure that everything is even and it's centered. Once I know that that's where I want it, then you can go ahead Press down, get your scraper tool for your final, and then we are gonna go over this really, really, very, very, really well. And that is because we want all of this to adhere to that wood. We don't want any bubbles coming up. 
So you can see I'm pressing down really good on it, especially the smaller le uh, letters as well. And then after you are done doing that, I go ahead and I put, oh, there's Hank, there's Hank, always behind me. Yes, I'm in pajama pants. All right, and then we are gonna go ahead and pull off our transfer tape. Now remember to be nice and slow with this because if you accidentally rip a letter or something, then you're kind of in trouble and you're gonna have to make a whole new stencil, which is not fun. Sorry, back again, that was another fight. Okay, so now I'm pressing my vinyl down with my fingers, just ensuring there's no bubbles here and there are none. So I'm gonna put the painter's tape back on the sides just for precaution. And then I'm taking Serenity Blue Chalk Paint by Linen, by Linen, by rust using the same sponge roller. All I did was rinse it out with water. And uh, I am applying it with a very light hand. So I'm gonna do our stripes here, and then I'm gonna go over the top. Again, when you do this top edge, do not press hard. You don't want it going on the back of your sign. Like I said, uh, a little bit's fine, but a lot, meh, no. So after we're done doing that, I cannot stress enough that you do not put any pressure while going over your letters. Don't do it because when you put pressure, you're pushing that paint underneath the vinyl. It doesn't always happen, but you are giving that, that paint a chance to go under the vinyl if you are pressing hard on your sponge. So you wanna do very light coats. Then I'm gonna take the blow dryer. I'm speeding up my process here, which is totally fine on cool setting, drying that. And then we are gonna do a second coat of this on the top, the bottom, and the outside edge as well, making sure to get a nice smooth finish. So now we're gonna take this off. This is the part we all love as wood sign makers, seeing those amazing crisp lines. Now, you guys, this tape is more expensive. So if you can save it, then save it because it is really, really sticky tape and you can reuse it multiple times. So keep that in mind. Mine kept curling up on me though, so. Now, that synthetic brush that I'm using, y'all, that is because you will notice right here, I hardly ever put my hand on the wood. And that is because when you pull away vinyl with chalk paint, it has a tendency to flake. And if a flake drops on that piece of wood and you like accidentally rub your hand on it, it's almost like paint. Like it, it smears in and it will not come off. So I always try not to touch the piece. And if I do, then it's like my pinky is helping support my hand. Okay, so now I'm taking a weeding tool. Make sure you have a very sharp weeding tool. When I first started out doing wood signs, I was using my Cameo weeding tool, which was very dull. So I was gouging the crap out of my wood. And what I mean is it was hard to get the weeding tool underneath the vinyl. So I was pressing basically into the wood to try to get under the vinyl and lift it up. With this weeding tool, it's the Cricut weeding tool. This thing is so darn sharp that I just have to kind of press it under just a little bit and it lifts up my vinyl right away. I absolutely love it. So we are going to finish weeding out all of our pieces here. I know some of you absolutely love watching that. So anyways, oh yeah, the synthetic brush is to uh, remove all of the little flakes that might come off. That way we don't smear it on our board. So now we're clearing it. This is Helmsman water-based, okay? That's important, water-based spar urethane. This is made for outdoor signs to withstand the elements. If you use polyacrylic water base, those that is for inside use, okay? It's not gonna protect it from the elements of humidity, snow, water, all of that stuff. Well, water, yeah. But anyways, I'm just taking a chip brush. I'm using light and thin coats. This has like a watery consistency, so you don't need a lot. It goes a long way. You don't want to go over the same spot multiple times because it will get gummy. It like, tends to dry pretty darn fast. So just go over it. Now, don't forget to get your sides and I will show you why right now. You're going to have clear that's going to drip down the sides. I'm going to show you. See that? See the, the drips? 
if you let those dry, they're gonna turn into like these cloudy bubbles. You don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and just brush it into the side. I'm using downward motions here, very easy. I'm gonna use my blow dryer, again, on cool setting. If you use heat on it, it bubbles up the spar urethane. So I'm doing this to quicken my process. Some people sand in between coats. I don't do that and I don't have any issues with it. Now that that second coat's dry, we're gonna put a clean base down. These are just doggy pee pads and they're seriously my favorite. If you can find the extra large ones, get those because they're a lot bigger than this. So now we're just gonna do the back exactly like we did the front. You're going to touch on every piece of this. Now make sure you cover every piece because if you don't, then you're gonna have some matte looking edges and then glossy. So now we're gonna put our D hooks on. Y'all, these are back in stock finally. And these D hooks I put three inches in and I believe it's like the second line down from the top. These D hooks come with the screws. So I'm gonna screw these on right here, easy, super easy peasy, and I do angle them. Now taking this wired jute core, this is actually from Dollar Tree. I used it on my last wood round and absolutely loved it. All you gotta do is cut it down to size. I used, mine was I think 26 inches long, and then you just wrap it around. I do end up hot gluing the ends just so that twine doesn't unravel off of the wire. And I absolutely love this. Love, love, love it. You can also use ribbon and all that stuff. I will attach down below and a bunch of cards up top for some of my different wood round videos. So now we're gonna do our floral and our bow. So these are lamb's ear. They are from Walmart. I believe they're $2 for two of them or they could be three, I'm not sure. Then taking some ribbon, I'm so sorry, I did not measure this for you, but it is all gonna be about preference. It is gonna be about how far you want your greener, greenery or how close you want your greenery together. So here, I'm just measuring it out. Then I'm gonna cut three pieces in the same length then I'm gonna go back and cut another strip about six to eight inches long. So now we're gonna go ahead and start putting our bow together. So we are gonna hot glue the ends of three pieces. So our little cylinder piece, you can see it looks like a little cylinder. And then we are going to take two of these pieces of ribbon. We're gonna hot glue those together as well, just the ends. You don't have to get crazy with a hot glue. And I am using wired ribbon. I got this 70% off after Christmas at Michael's. Okay, so let's put this baby together. Oh wait, dovetails. So I learned this from Crafted by Corey, just folding it in half, folding it in half again. Then you get two dovetails, one shot. Okay, so now I'm just putting my two bows together. I just folded them together. Then I'm pushing the tail down to the bottom. I'm gonna take that cylinder, put it on top. Then I'm taking my zip tie. Now, when you do a zip tie, do not pull it tight yet. Do not pull it tight. The amazing thing with zip ties is you can adjust the bow. So if one's longer on one side and not the other, you can still move them with the zip ties. And the best part, I'm gonna show you right now. You can stick your greenery and flowers in that zip tie. So you can see, I just stuck it through the zip ties here, playing around with the placement, push them in, take them out, whatever you wanna do, because the zip tie is not tied yet, okay? It's on there loose. So I'm gonna take some Dollar Tree. They're like little miniature roses. They absolutely look so gorgeous and so high end. And what I'm doing when I have this board up, I'm sorry you can't see that angle, but all I'm doing is lifting that board up. I'm sticking those flowers in there and I'm just trying to figure out where I want my placement to be. And you're gonna have to keep doing that over and over to really see how it lays on the board. If I were to do it without the board and then put it on, the chances of me having it lay right is probably not likely. So that is why I do this. I hold it stick my florals in, then I'll put it back down, check it out, and I just go back, forth, back, forth. Now, once it's where I want it to be, that is when we are going to tighten the zip tie. So I'm really happy with this. I'm gonna turn it around. 
I'm gonna tighten that as tight as I can. And then I am putting a little hot glue on the back just because the stems of those roses are so skinny that I don't wanna have the chance of those like slipping out of our zip tie. So then I just cut the tail off the zip tie. I'm cutting the extra length off of my stems that you can kind of see through the florals. Now I am going to cut down my uh, tails on my bow because I really want you to be able to, to read the words we put, uh, hashtag, uh, you know. Um, I want somebody to be able to read what the come in and is. So I cut those down to size. Now you guys, the way I attach this, so there's many ways you could attach it, but I am gonna use this heavy like industrial strength Velcro and I cut it down to size. Now. I have made a few with this Velcro and not have, have not had issues. However, I have not done it in the sweltering heat yet, but I have used it in the snow and all of the winter weather and it works amazing. So all I'm doing is applying this directly to the wood round. Then I'm going to take off that top Velcro and we're gonna attach it to the back of our bow. Now you could apply a little bit of like super glue to the back of these as well. Um, but yeah, I will let you guys know during the summer how these hold up, but it, it works so far. And I love that you can change these out because although I love this vibe for spring, I might want something that's nautical or summery so I could easily take this off and then put a new one on. So you guys, I cannot wait for you to see how this turns out. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. I know you guys love some wood rounds, so I was very happy to put this together for you. And I can honestly say this is my favorite wood round that I've ever done. I don't usually use florals in my wood rounds, um, but this just came out, the colors and everything came out so stunning. Um, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe you guys. And my supply list is down in the description box under my Amazon store link. Oh my gosh, this came out just so beautiful. Oh, I love it. All right, y'all make sure you comment down below. I would love to see your feedback and I hope you guys have an amazing week. I will be back here Thursday for a Dollar Tree haul and Saturday for some more DIYs. Have a good one. That is not a hairdo you need to be doing. Woman, come on. Come on. Come on. How about no? How about? How about? How about you just twist your hair up like this? Just like this? And then you, you just tuck it on in there. You just tuck it on in like a little tuck a root. Tuck a root, tuck a root, tuck a root, root, root. Nah, okay, let's not do that. Let's just get into this. All these little wispy babies. All these little wispies. Okay. I don't think it's folded, but it's just the shining. It's just the shining. Oh, it's so soft. So soft. So hard to touch the baby. What movie is that from? Okay. Anyways, let's get into this. Other, tons other, no.